<laughs> Let me tell you the story of the ruin of the Orpheus, one of the mightiest vessels ever to sail the oceans. "'Twas a stormy night, and a sea of mermen had just finished ravaging the deck, and so... In a desperate bid to pursue them to their watery hideout, Captain Zarov ordered us to sail that mighty ship into the sharpest rocks in the five oceans. We were doomed, our only hope, to cast four bootleg anchors onto those giant black stones before our ship was broken to splinters. And this is the room design. <laughs> Greetings, programs. Your old buddy Ingrid Bernal here. That's a hankered fur nail. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Drunkens and Dragons. This is more room design coming at you, and we're going to pick up right where last week left off. So if you watched the uh, previous video, what was it? Uh, you know, Mob the Deck. So it's a bunch of mermen. Kuatoa. The Sahagwin, the deep ones. We're talking about fish people. So a bunch of them attack the boat. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a boat, and they don't necessarily have to be fish people, but you do need something attacking, and you need a limited space to make the last room design work. Just like that room design, this one's going to pick up on the ship theme right where it left off. But the joy of the design shouldn't be in your new nautical all-boat campaign. The joy of this design, this room design, should be that you should be able to apply it to anything in your game and drop it in because that's how we do it on Drunkens and Dragons. So thank you for tuning in. Let's get right into this one. It's called The Knives. Okay, so as the shenanigans in the intro imply, this encounter involves taking a ship and trying to sail it through a series of razor-sharp rocks. Not Emin Wheel, a series of rocks called the knives. Now, the captain in this particular situation, in my story, Captain Zarov, who later will become probably one of the biggest villains in my story, is desperately trying to dash this ship through these sharp rocks to pursue the fishmen who just finished ravaging most of his crew. He is not going to let them get off easy. But in order to catch them in this pursuit, he's going to perform a daring move, which is to go between all these sharp rocks out in the open ocean and then stop the ship so suddenly they don't smash into some of the bigger rocks, which are, in effect, islands, which is where our fishy quarry happens to be making their hideout. And that's going to be our next room design, is Green Gill's hideout. But for right now... The Orpheus is this huge galleon, and he's going to sail it at top speed right through these sharp rocks and then try to stop it in time to get an away team onto the, this island and pursue his fishy attackers. The reason that it's an interesting room design is that it's going to pose a sort of a fundamental role, and that's R-O-L-L -L challenge to your players, which is basically just asking them, can you guys all get a successful role on the same round? And if you even want to do it like Professor DM does it, you could actually even be doing these roles, which we're about to talk about in a second, simultaneously, which would be even more realistic for the gravity of the moment. So let's get a picture of what the knives are going to look like They're right up here. Okay, so here we see these razor sharp rocks out in the ocean and so the job here is to sail this ship through and then at just the right moment to throw out four anchors from the four corners of the ship and catch these rocks and go and bring the ship to a sudden stop if this there's success then the ship will be intact at the last second and mariners will tell of this maneuver for decades to come. And this is also part of what's fun about this room design is you have a combined player team role effort that needs to happen. That's part one. But then part two is the binary outcome of that. Okay, so let's let's take this step by step. And let's get into this role challenge first. So let's get our boat diagram up. There we go. There's our boat diagram. Now, you're going to need at least four players to really do this effectively unless you want to have an NPC as one of the anchor tossers. But you basically put a character at each corner of this rectangular space. And on a round, each one of them needs to beat a roll. Now, the reason I'm so cagey about saying exactly what this roll could be is because you need to tune it to your group, right? Maybe it's a DC 13 strength roll. Let's just put it right there. To throw this big anchor... Whoo, whoo, 
out there onto that horn of rock. Got it. So you make the roll and that anchor holds. Then the next player needs to make his or her roll. Get the anchor out. You need four successes consecutively to stop the ship. Sounds pretty easy, right? But there's a catch. The fishmen are still attacking. And this is going to be the component, hopefully, that will drive your players a little bit crazy. Now, if all they had to do was everyone succeed on the same round, even that would not be easy. But you have fishmen and you could spawn 1d4 of them per turn, popping up or per round if you want to go easier, popping up over the sides of the ship, trying to disrupt this maneuver. Because the fishmen want the Orpheus to crash into the rocks and be blown apart. And all the fishmen are going to do is just jump back in the water. They don't care. They're just accomplishing their mission, which we don't know, know yet. That's still a secret. Okay, so all the players have to do is each one succeed consecutively in one round to stop the Orpheus. We've got some fishmen attacking, right, to make things a little more interesting. And then we find, come to our final piece, which is our timer. This ship is going to hit the main island, the biggest mass of rock in the knives, in a short amount of time. Now, this all depends on your sort of challenge tuning that you want to do as a game master here. If you want to make this really hard, roll a d4 for how long it's going to be before the Orpheus hits. If you don't want to leave it up to a dice, you could just say three rounds. That would be the hard mode. If you want to make it a little easier, do six rounds. You have like six rounds to try to accomplish this. And I would not recommend doing more than eight because eight rounds can actually be a long time of play. And you want this little room design to be maybe 20 minutes of play. You want this to be a fast, exciting chapter change in your story from a big battle, which was our last design, Mob the Deck, and a dungeon crawl, which is going to be our next one, Green Gill's Hideout. So this is just a cool, fast transition. Like doing this sort of maneuver with a ship, you could do with anything. You could do it with a spell jammer. You could do it with like a, a rolling machine. You could even do it with like a, a sort of a a mass of wreckage that maybe players are riding down a slope that's sliding and they need a moment where all four of them succeed to sort of stop this disaster train. This is great because it really gets players to root for each other. Let's say the first two people make their roll successfully. That third one has a lot of gravity to it. Like you really want that third player to succeed because this can only be su uh, successfully executed with four people succeeding. And actually, very few challenges in our hobby really exploit this mindset of the four of us have to succeed together or we don't succeed. Okay, so now we have this anchor effort. We have two clear outcomes here and there's kind of no denying it. There's no storying your way out of the two outcomes here. Either the Orpheus, this huge galleon, is going to smash into these rocks because they couldn't execute the anchor maneuver or they're going to anchor, uh, execute it successfully and the Orpheus will come to an amazing stop and the Mariners will sing of this incredible maneuver. Here's where your comprehension of a binary outcome becomes so critical as the game master. So I'm gonna have either a completely destroyed ship and probably almost all hands lost to the waves. Even potentially the captain might vanish or I'm gonna have a perfectly intact ship. Like these are really different outcomes. And all you need is a quick little bullet in your journal that just gives you a sense of what's... So in my case, if the Orpheus is intact, there's actually a twist involved here, which is that Captain Zarov is going to abandon the away teams once they're on the island. He's, they're gonna come back and the ship is going to be off in the distance sailing away. On the other hand, if the ship is destroyed, Baron Zarov is lost in the waves and presumed dead. Either way, despite there being a binary outcome, my story has one unifying piece that I know I can count on, which is Captain Zarov is sort of gone. He's going away or is missing somewhere. And that's going to be part of how I'm going to string my story along forward. So in a way, I have this really strong binary outcome, but it's not necessarily a bifurcation of the future of my campaign. There's always going to be a way to continue the story, but knowing this binary outcome, I think is really fun because it prepares you to have descriptive guts when either one occurs. Rather than to be like, I was counting on you guys not stopping the ship, you actually did it. Like, 
and then being sort of flabbergasted and not quite ready to narrate that. So be ready for a binary outcome and you don't have to make all your stuff have binary outcomes. You can completely have wide open narrative possibility that players are going to fill in with their incredible imaginations. But sometimes thinking in binary outcomes can allay some of that paralyzing sort of imagination fear that is the enemy of the game master, right? You want to be able to freely have your ideas and express your fantasies about wild scenes without getting too head scratchy about how many outcomes and the Rubik's Cube of how the story will continue. So we have this anchor bootleg maneuver, which requires characters to all succeed together. Then we have this binary outcome, but no matter what, the players, even if they crash through the waves and are washed up on the, on the rocky coast of this main island of rock in this formation called the Knives. Even if that's what happens, no matter what, we have players arriving on an island and they see an opening, a cavern. And remember, their standing orders from Captain Zaroff are to get in there and to find those the fishy people that attacked them, get some answers and possibly some revenge and report back. That's the job of the away team. That's their current task. And what group of players is going to resist a nice delve into a cavern up ahead? And that's going to be our next room design next week. But for now, that's it. That's the knives. It's a simple way to unify player rolling and ask them to all succeed together. If you're being wrestled back by a, a fish man who's like confining you, you can't throw an anchor. And so that can make actually that early part of that um, the anchor throwing challenge more complex and more troublesome than it might seem just because it's easy to say in the room design. Thanks you guys for tuning in. This is another just quick, simple room designs. I'm going to be doing these on the weekly. That's my plan because I really want to journey with you through this campaign that I'm building. I am returning to the table with a freaking vengeance. We have found our third player. So we're only looking for one more here in great Philly PA and, um, that's what it is, and that's where it's at. All right, thanks for tuning in, you guys. Keep it real. Don't steal. You always get a deal. May your dice roll high, and uh, I'll see you guys all on the internet. All right, keep an eye out for hardcore mode. Y'all know what's up. Peace. I am a man. I am a man and a fish. I am a man. I've got one final wish. It's to walk on land. I want to be a fish man. Walk on land. I have one final wish. That is to be a walking fish. Walking on land with two man legs. That's what I want. Oh, one is a peg. Got bit off by an alligator. I think I took it too far. Ah! Uh, no! 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 God. Over aggressive microphone.